Lucas. Hey, how are you doing, Daniel? How are you doing? <laughs> nice shirt. Uh, I usually have um, my signature shirt is a Hawaii shirt, so I appreciate the color that you bring to, to this event. Yeah, I was just chatting in the, in the green room. I do feel like the 60s are coming back, um, not only <laughs> culturally, but, you know, psychedelic AI art and then VR and AR devices that change how you see reality. And, you know, what is reality even anymore? Um, psychedelics are becoming legal, which is good because I feel like the 60s are primarily one of the main reasons the PC computing revolution happened, like when it comes to like accessibility and user interfaces. So could be cool. Could be a good time. Could be cool. Bring back the 60s. Hashtag. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they're already here. Um, thanks for joining, Lucas. I saw you last uh, in LA at the AR house, but I, I heard you've moved to the East Coast now. Is that right? No. Oh, <laughs> I'm still okay. here at the AR house. Yeah. Um, I'm in the office because there's a lot of people downstairs. Um, mm. And yeah, I'm thinking about the East Coast, but LA is pretty good too. Cool, cool. Um, I was thinking about how to introduce you, and uh, I'll come to why in a minute, but I'm actually I'm a bit reluctant to describe you. I'd rather if you said a few words about how you describe yourself. Pe when, when I talk to people about you, when you come up in conversation, often the word pioneer is used, but I, I'd rather hear it from your own, uh, from your own mouth. I, I don't know, honestly. It, it changes every year, right? It, it depends on what I'm doing, but I've been, you know, doing VR and AR products for, um, I started out with the HoloLens in, in 2016. So I'm a designer, I'm a developer. Um, recently I've been doing, you know, I launched the game of the Quest and recently I've been doing lots of like um, viral videos about projects because I wanted yeah. to just do, I, I wanted to stop waiting for the market to catch up with my ideas. So I'm like, I'm just going to make something and make yeah. it a good story, right? So, yeah. um, but now I'm back and again with a new startup. So. Yeah, to make sure startup founder and designer and artist and filmmaker and, and influencer and whatever it is that's happening. But I do think those things are important right now. Um, you know, it's really hard to do a product, especially a social product, without hands-on viral marketing knowledge. It's really hard to design a compelling VR air experience if you don't have programming experience to know what the hell you're doing um, mm. and if you're setting up your team for failure. So, yeah, it's hard to explain, but I think that's going to be a good thing. Later. You're quite versatile in that way. So I was preparing for this conversation and I made some notes and don't take this the wrong way. But I thought two ways that I might describe you would one actually be a poet and a seer. And traditionally, poets were people who thought deeply about stuff and shared that with other people in ways that other people hadn't seen it yet. And when I see the stuff you're putting out, I recognize kind of what you're doing when I, but I wouldn't have got there by myself. Like you helped me make leaps of imagination. Uh, the, the time machine that you built, um, it just blew my mind uh, that you spent a year with these glasses on your head. That was an example. And another word, the other word that I might use to describe you is a jester. And traditionally jesters in the, in the king's court, they were really, really important for the health of of the of the of the of the reign, like they were the only people that could question the authority. They had the license to not take people too seriously. So I, I like your call it subversive or alternative takes on existing technologies. I really appreciate that about what I've seen of your work anyway. Thanks. Yeah, it's VR and AR is really cool, but we need you know if you want it to become mainstream, we really need to look at our products and the things we make as basically cultural movements, right? And how do you turn something into a cultural movement? And the answer is that you need people to care about it, regular people that mm. don't care about technology, they care right. about what it ena enables them to do. So by, yeah, by trying to frame projects from a storytelling angle, I think I've been finding lots of cool ways to teach people why it's important. And then they become interested, right? Uh, if, if you start from like, this is meaningful, this is cool, um, then, you know, then they buy a VR headset rather than just, you know, it's yeah. thing you can buy. Um, transformative. Yes. Interesting, because my co-host Julie often uses the word return on experience. But what you just said sounds a little bit like people, why should I care, return on attention. Like, why should I pay attention to this? A lot of consumers, they don't, in, they don't feel like they're investing. You know, what am I going to get out of this in terms of money? But if I'm going to give my time and attention to this, what's in it for me? 
return on attention uh, is, a, is a, a new concept that's just crossed my mind. Yeah, but at the same time, it's it's not new in the sense because that's what TV was all, always was in the beginning, right? It was it was a public service. You would watch something, yeah. you know, like, I'm mean, actually getting something out of this. Um, uh -huh. And, of, of course, you know, there's lots of dumb stuff on TikTok that's just like a time waste um, that, you know, people feel guilty Don't about really watching. <laughs> But you can present these things in a way that's literally like gives people something, right? Provides them with a service, like a new thought, or they learn something, or they just are like really well entertained. So, um, and that's that what I appreciate. Good. What I've seen about your stuff—that's what I really that Thanks. that twist on things. You you you're saying something, but you're saying it in a compelling way. Like you could just go out and say it, but then you yeah you wrap it in a in an interesting perspective. Yeah, I'm just you know just bored and want to make. This, this space has no right to be boring. No right to be this boring. This space has no you, right to be boring. No. <laughs> it, you can literally do anything. Literally anything. And is that ever like, a problem? Is that ever a problem when you can actually do anything? I, one of the questions is, like, how do you find inspiration? Have you got just a million ideas a second? Or is it actually quite difficult to decide on one thing to do? Um, when it comes to projects, and I mean, this, this applies to the startup as well, um, you look for ideas that seem really good, but seem very simple, right? Very simple to execute, very simple when it comes to like user experience and approach. Um, Cause I think that's what elegant ideas look like. There's plenty of things you can do that will be complicated. Um, mm. But again, I'm, I'm sorry I can't talk about it too much, but with uh, the startup I'm working on, we did like a six hour sprint, had the shittiest thing and then we played it and you know, people played it all night and couple people cried when they tried it. So I was like, oh, okay. And I think that's what elegance looks like. I mean, Beat Saber as well, you know, most of the game was built in like a week. Um, mm. And that is something that it's, kind of, it's been kind of missing from VR and AR. Um, I've seen like so many products that have started out simple, things like big screen, which in the beginning it was just a big screen, but now it's evolved into this huge metaverse play mm. in which mm. there's so many things on top of it. Um, and I think that's so probably what Apple's going to is part of the secret sauce. Uh, yeah, and not everything needs to be a metaverse, right? Um, but yeah. a lot of companies feel like they have to do that's that. That's so subversive, Lucas. How dare you say uh, that? <laughs> most no, of the I, people I who are going to enter the VR market have never put on put on a headset before, and right. they're not. You know, uh, your most hardcore users they might want really complicated features and advanced features, right. but the millions of people that are going to buy headsets in the next couple of years, the tens of millions of people, yeah. they're not there yet. They want simplicity, right? Um, so, yeah. And I so think that's what one of my favorite apps is Google stuff. Earth VR. And I know behind the scenes is extremely complex to make all of that work. But actually the experience and interface and the fact that it's a single user experience, for me, the simplicity of Google Earth, I can spend hours playing Google Earth VR. Um, yeah. So... In your short bio, there was a comment about making a future, inspiring people to make a future more like Star Trek and less like Black Mirror. And we've had a couple of conversations. I had a conversation earlier where we were talking about the underbelly of the metaverse to come, the dark met, the dark web. Um, what's your concerns about, around Black Mirror? Hmm. Actually, I'd say I'm more like... Um... I'm more of a fan of fantasy than science fiction. I actually think mm -hmm. science fiction has been a problem for our industry. I think it has led to a lot of wrongful assumptions um, when it comes to building products. Uh, but answering the question, I mean, it's just, you know, one of the reasons I'm really interested in VR and AR, and I think everyone here is the same, is there's a lot of utopian and dystopian potential. So it's really ours to fuck up. And if you fuck up, you're not just like fucking up like a game or even like a category of computing. You're literally fucking up the reality that our children are going to be seeing for generations. So it's really important that we don't don't screw this up because, um, you know, literally like this, this is how kids are going to grow up seeing the world. It's literally through, right. through, through an, an intermediate. Just like with social media and mobile phones, right? Just. Yeah. Yeah. Except now it's direct access into their brain. So. Um, exactly yeah so it's really important um, that we don't fuck it up it's really really important that we don't fuck it up absolutely um what 
what do you dream about being able to do? Or, because you said earlier you can literally do anything, do you not feel that there are many constraints or do you still feel constrained in what you would like to be able to do with this music? Just, just connect with people. Um, I think ultimately that's that's just like what everyone's looking after with pretty much everything. When they go out to a bar, when they go play a multiplayer game, when they go to the movies. Um, and I think, you know, because you have full sensory control, you can literally design everything that people see and hear and touch, but also how they see each other. Um, I think VR and AR is like the most um, powerful medium for creating connection between mm. people, like genuine connections. Um, which is the one thing social media is really bad at, right? Um, we've managed to connect information very successfully on the web, but when it comes to connecting people emotionally in ways that like matter, not really. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which is good. Um, and that's the it's like a tin you know. can. It's like the like the tin cans connected with a with a string. That sure you're connected, but the quality of the connection ain't that great. Right. Exactly. Um, so yeah, I think about that a lot. What are the things that social VR and AR can do that really are the things that you know modern social media fails at? Because we're not going to be able to compete with the convenience of you know things like Instagram and text messaging. Um, hmm. So what are the things we can do that two D interfaces cannot compete with? Um, and yeah, so I think that, so. I think about that a lot. Yeah, you mentioned social AR. I haven't seen any, and to be fair, I haven't looked very far. I've, I've got my hands full with social VR and multi-user VR. How, where's social AR at? Where would I go to have social AR experiences? Is there, are there any platforms or apps that allow for that properly yet? Was Pokemon Go social AR? Is that something you would uh, class as that? Okay, so sorry to break the news, guys. Pokemon Go is not an AR game. <laughs> Let's be real. It's AR is totally optional. You can literally turn it off. It's a GPS game. It's a Google Maps game, <laughs> which is fine. It's really good. But um, I think we need to stop using it as an example of like a successful AR title. Because if the yeah. AR is totally optional, uh, literally a thing you can turn off and the game works just as well, it's not really an AR game. It's a game with you know AR features. Yeah. The same okay. thing with Instagram and Snapchat, right? They are not AR products, but they have this optional AR feature. So. Pokemon Go is an AR product as much as Instagram is a social AR product. Um, mm. So a little bit, but not that much. Um, there's nothing really with social AR that's that's compelling for the most part, to be honest. Everyone's taking mm. the same design approach, which is just like, what if we spread shit out across the entire world? Um, and that's you know technically impressive, but how do you make people care about information, right? Yeah. In, in that way. And yeah. it's too, you know, there's people who are working on this problem, like Matt and the folks at Living Cities in New York. I'm sure they're going to come up with a lot of interesting stuff, but I'm more of a fan of creating social AR experiences that are deeply focused um, and you know deeply tied to certain spots in your home, and basically you know building more cohesive user interfaces around it. So just okay. spatializing stuff again, technically impressive, but it doesn't make people care about that information, but you can design things for the home that could make sense. Um, and yeah. that's one of the things I'm working on. So listening to your comments, one of the threads I'm hearing is make people care about it. Why should people uh, care? Yeah. 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 yeah people, yeah. people don't care about information. They care about what the information represents to them. Right. Um, mm. So you can drop a memory of like, you know, once I, I you know, my, I had my first kiss in this bench in the park and it sounds cool. In, in theory, but also most people are not going to care because it doesn't it, it doesn't re, you know relate to them in any particular way. Um, yeah, so it's tricky. It's a tricky problem. It is. So, um, can you tell us anything about some upcoming projects, or are they embargoed, or working on anything you can share? Um, nothing I can share right now. It's definitely really weird what we're doing. We're basically unlocking an entirely new vertical <laughs> of XR content. Um, by doing something that's incredibly simple, but that no one's doing. And it may not be social initially, but the plan is to 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 be social. So mm -hmm. I know this is ambiguous, but when you see it, you'll be like, oh, okay. Um, and a lot of people are gonna think it's not gonna work, which is great. Cause I, I mean, I think that's important. Um, but yeah, just trying to, you know, I've been watching, I've been just sort of like waiting for 
us to do something interesting with the RNAR and the metaverse for the past couple of years and it's just not happening. And I saw so many people mm -hmm. getting so much money in the past couple of months. And wow. when I talked to them, like, so what is your plan? You got $30 million, so what are you doing? And they just don't know what they're doing. They just found really complicated ways to say, I don't have a clue. <laughs> um, and I'm like, wow, this is, no, this isn't good. And a lot of the best people I think left in 2018 and 2019, you know, when the market, when the VR crashed for the first time, um, so we're like, let's just do something that we think is interesting and moves the needle, right? And um, mm -hmm. makes a contribution <laughs> to the medium of like this product, you know, changes how everyone looks at, at, at the hardware and the possibilities of software. Um, but also doing something- and that's what I meant by my comment about being a poet, because I think that's what poets did. They, 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 they allowed other people to access thoughts and perspectives that they wouldn't reach by themselves. And when I first tried Where Thoughts Go uh, that you created back in, was it 2017, 18? I, I don't know. Yeah, 2018, I, I first, 20, it was out yeah. of quest in 2019. Yeah, the simplicity and beauty. I, I cried tears on that app and that was way back when. Um, and I still haven't really seen anything like it. It's actually inspired other ideas that I think somebody should go and develop i'm not a developer or creator in that way but um yeah that really stuck with me um all right yeah it's super simple. It, yeah it's yeah, incredibly simple. Super simple. Super by just simple. changing how you represent people you can create like new social dynamics that are super compelling now where thought yeah. show is a very abstract concept and that was one of the reasons like it didn't go like it didn't go, get super big but the same thing applies right you can lit you can literally design all kinds of new social dynamics um, around the metaverse and VR and AR that are super compelling. And that's what made things work with the internet, right? It's like things like Snapchat and message boards. They, what they essentially are is like reorganizing people and how they're represented to create yeah. new kinds of interactions that the public loves. Um, we never got anywhere by trying to recreate the real world because um, we're always going to come up, come up short. And what we're doing a lot with the metaverse right now is just being like, look, it kind of feels like you're there. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, you know, it's cool. We need to develop the technology um, to allow for those kinds of presence. But, but especially like young people, they're just going to look at this and be like, oh, this is some boomer shit. And they're just never going to embrace it, right? People want things that are a little Until weirder. they can make it their own. Until they can make it their own. Yeah. No? So, it's tricky. <laughs> All right. Um, do you have any advice for creators so either we got people on the call here now or people are going to be watching this back do you have any advice for creators hmm. well plenty <laughs> but i'd love to know if you guys have any questions as well so i can like frame this question a little bit more accurately to everyone who's watching but um i think the main piece of advice is just like so you, you, you're asking about ideas, right? And how do you choose what to work on? And I think one thing that's been helping me a lot is working on things that I feel like only I can execute because they ha are a combination of interests of mine and skill sets of mine that really only I possess. And I think that's the best way for you to do innovative work. Um, it's, it's just like when you have two projects and you're like, oh, this is one thing that only I can do because only I'm into all these things, right? You know, the, the combination of all these things. And this is something that if I don't do it, someone else is going to do it in two years. Um, I think always going for the thing that only you can do basically results in a very interesting body of work. But it also just makes you really unique long term because because you're doing things only you can do, you're creating new knowledge that right. only you possess. Right. Um, and over the years, that turns you into a person, I believe, that can make jumps that to other people seem beyond them. But How it's really just the result yeah. of you digging down this this path, right, of, of personal interest that um, basically only you care about. So it's also a great way to just stand out in general. Um, it's scary, right? You have to, you know, start... It means that you have to decide to work on projects that you actually like really care about. And very yeah. often these are not financially feasible. Where I thought mm -hmm. was built in my free time. I had to learn how to code because I had no money to pay anyone. Um, so it's really hard and it's still hard, but it, 
It's a good long-term strategy, even though it's a horrendous <laughs> short-term strategy. <laughs> we do have a question from the from the chat. For Lucas, can we have a meaningful interactive AR on mobile, or is everything a prototype for when we get to broad wearable adoption? You can. It's very hard to make it. Um, everyone's approaching it the wrong way when it comes to the, the affordances of the phone and the camera movement, right? Moving, um, we're not used to the concept of like moving the camera and on anything that's not like a first person shooter. And I mean, if, if people are complaining about the field of view on headsets, the field of view on this is so much smaller. <laughs> it's right. just like, so it's, um, it's a really tough platform to work it on, to work on. The only thing I've seen that I think is brilliant, is something Aiden Wolf, um, he's a game designer, is releasing this month on Snap. It's the most compelling game, AR game I've ever seen. It's ridiculous. And it's like five megabytes. Um, and I'm not gonna spoil it, but it's, you know, the AR, what's really powerful about it is context, right? It's, it's awareness of this is the kind of space you're in. So let me give you something that's relevant to it. Um, mm -hmm. And if you do this well enough, um, you, you can do things that feel really magical. But in the end, you know, these are fun gimmicks. The The phone was not designed to be used in this way. Um, it's just not going to work. Um, although, you know, for filters, it's great. So it's more like of an exploration playground. You can make compelling AR products that people use, but then you need to make sure they go viral, like all right. the time. And yeah. designing a product with virality in mind is like a very specific design challenge as well. Um, it's, yeah, it changes how you think about the product. So you can do things that work, but ultimately, you know, we know this is going to transition into AR. And the main problem is just the interaction fidelity. It's really hard to do interactions that feel good with this. Um, yeah. Or really like any other AR headset until now with, with pass-through. Mm -hmm. um, so you can do good things if you're thinking about it the right way really hard to make a mainstream title unless you're making something that can result in lots of memes and lots of virality. Okay. And yeah, it's kind of like a prototype. Everything's a prototype. And Pokemon Go is not a near game. <laughs> I will remember that. Um, here's a question. What do you make of AI? Do you, are you excited about AI? Are you using AI in any of your projects? Yes, I am. Um, you are, and am you are excited, it. or I'll let you split that question into, into the component parts. <laughs> it's it's going to be a huge deal. It's going to cause a lot of chaos. Um, it's moving so fast. It's kind of disorienting. Um, it's definitely going to enable the metaverse, right? All the stuff like, you know, text prompts to 3D model stuff is also moving very fast. And mm. these kinds of tools are going to enable, like, world creation, it's just going to be so, so much faster to make things. But not only that, you know, so much faster to make like indie games, even like AAA titles. Because um, we're only like a, within the decade, basically, you'll be able to shorten, you know, it usually take you like two, three years to make an indie game, right? We can shorten the timetable to like three months with like yeah. way less people involved by automating a lot of the, um, the processes. What yeah. this means is that the people that built an entire career on like a specialized skill, like 3D modeling or, you know, concept art, um, they, they're going to have a hard time. Now, yeah. what's going to happen is that you're going to have a lot more, you know, game directors, right, launching games. The, the gaming market is just like, it's nothing, nothing compared to what it's going to be in, in terms of, like, numbers of titles being released, like numbers of high-quality titles. Um, right. So there's going to be a lot of people in, like, those direct directorial creative positions, but mm -hmm. all the people who have spent their whole life specializing in a particular hard skill are going to have a really tough time. I'm really worried for a lot of my creative friends um, who don't like tech this much and kind of like refuse to adapt. Mm -hmm. um, and ultimately, I think it's going to enable, you know, it's it's exact. It's the industrial revolution again, basically. What happened with exactly the industrial what? revolution? With mechanic, uh, so the, the first, in, uh, the industrial revolution Industrial right? revolution, Which, yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. What it did to mechanical labor, before everything was like artisanal goods that were like handmade, and then all of a sudden you're just mass producing um, shit, it's happening now with creative labor, right? And digital, just like with artisanal stuff, you lose, a, you lose a lot of the humanity and like the handcrafted, you know, individual items, but you achieve 
crazy scale that lets you build crazy things um, that change the world in really significant ways. So there's a, an ex a loss of humanity, um, but you know that enables you to do bigger things that hopefully have more humanity in them as a collective. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna change what, what art means, and it's gonna change what. Let me ex let me extend that question then, because um, I I uh, I founded Educators Beyond. I talked to a lot of universities and, and um, educators, and uh, they asked me what about content for education. I said, yeah, there's there's not enough good content yet, but I'm not concerned for two reasons. One, AI will pick up a lot of slack, and the the answer I've been giving them is also when this. When this generation of kids really gets their head around uh, VR and AR, personally, I'm hopeful that we'll see a wave of new content and perspectives that we just can't anticipate come from this new generation. Do you see that as well? Or do you think that AI is going to be so powerful and disruptive that the new generation won't have the same kind of chance? Like, I think about the hippies, the punks, the beatniks. They took culture, made it their own, disrupted it, and every parent in the neighborhood hated it and because it threatened what they knew and grew up with right so i'm hoping kids are going to do that with this technology as well grab it make it their own in ways that we don't understand but my question is do you think ai is going to disrupt it fundamentally so that that won't be the same for uh kids this of this generation no it, it, it'll happen and kids are going to be the first ones using it um by the way, there's just a little bit of echo on your end. I don't know if you have speakers, oh. but just letting you know. Okay, um, thank you. No worries. And yeah, I mean, the thing is like culture used to evolve kind of like generationally, at least in the past, you know, past hundred years or so, in which basically mm. each generation grows up with a new kind of um, media medium, mm. right? You know, from radio to black and white TV and then color TV and then cable mm. um, and then the internet. Um, and now we have like social apps, but what's, what's happening is like, um, the, <laughs> we're going to, we're culturally going to be developing with AI at a, at a rate that's insane. Right. So, um, it's no longer like one major medium change per generation. And it's more like couple per decade and mm -hmm. that's going to be hard to keep up and it's going to cause a lot of conflict <laughs> and angry people, but a lot of creativity. Um, so I do think kids are definitely going to be empowered to make stuff. Um, and yeah, I think it's going to be a net good later. I don't know if that answers the question. I I, I don't think kids are going to be excluded from this. Um, quite, quite the contrary. Well, that's hopeful. That's, that's really hopeful. Um, do you have any, uh, we have a few minutes left or two minutes left. Do you have, I was going to ask you if you have any, if you could like speak to the industry, if this was your megaphone to speak to the industry, to the to the community, do you have? I asked you about if you had any advice, and you said about connecting with people. Do you have any requests? Anything you would want the industry or the community to do to take on board that you want to leave them with? Uh, number one, I'm fundraising. <laughs> so talk to me. Uh, number two, just do weird shit. Um, do things you can't do anywhere else. These are the things yeah. that VR and AR is really good at. Um, everything else, you know, it's a half measure and it could work as a business for a while, but it's not really going to change the world. So mm. um, I just want to see more things that are weird, things that I'm like, really, I could only have this here. Um, and that provide people with value they can't get anywhere else. I think that's, you know, that's what it took for the internet to go mainstream. Um, that's what it took for PCs, honestly, to go mainstream as well. Smartphones and everything. Um, and I think it's the same case with the metaverse. It's not going to change. Um, so I just want to see more weird things, things that, like, when I look at it, I just, the way I look at the medium changes. There's not a lot of that anymore. But there's so much potential for it. There's so many ideas there that are so simple that are not being done. And yeah. People yeah. overthinking it, you think? Yeah. Also, be simple. Be simple. Um you know, focus on different differentiators. Focus less on your avatar system and your leveling tool and your level creation tools. Everybody has one. And you can build those once you've made something that people care about. You can leave those things to after. Um, yeah. 
instead of spending you know, months and millions of dollars building those first and then figuring out later, like, so how do we make this compelling? <laughs> yeah. All right, everybody get weirder. That's that's the message, right? Everybody get Pretty weirder. <laughs> Lucas, thank you so much for the conversation. Greatly enjoyed it. Looking forward to some more of your work coming out.